put your phone down. Being tethered to a device is the most dangerous thing you can do. Public pools are preparing for the summer as their doors open for the season this weekend. And while it's a fun way to beat the heat, safety, of course, is crucial. According to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, from Memorial Day through Labor Day in 2017, at least 163 children younger than age 15 drown in swimming pools or spas. Almost 70% were children younger than age 5. 10 News anchor Brandon Bates spoke to the city about what parents should and shouldn't be doing when they take their family to the pool. Brandon. Well, Robin and John, today I went to Inskip Pool and learned that safety is clearly the number one priority and the lifeguards there take pride in what they do and they recognize the responsibility as well. Knoxville lifeguards are putting the final touches on their pool just days before opening for the season. The aquatic specialist for the city takes a lot of pride in his pool and the people he employs. And it's basically a 27 hour interview. We're able to see the type of person that they are, the type of situational awareness they have and um, their willingness to uh, to give effort. But he says parents shouldn't treat the guards like babysitters. I'm not a fan of dropping kids off. I think parents need to play together, knowing the rules of the facility. When you walk in the door, read the rules. If you're not sure what you're looking at, have a lifeguard explain them to you. He says to stay within arm's reach of your children and always be on high alert. Put your phone down. Being tethered to a device is the most dangerous thing you can do. And the world's largest lifeguard association agrees. Last year, the German Lifeguard Association issued a warning that parents glued to their cell phones while kids are swimming can be a deadly mix. Being aware is the number one key to saving a life. Prevention is everything. While Love says it's important for parents to do their part, he says his team is ready. We place a high priority on safety. In Skip Pool is fully staffed with high school and college age kids who have been through rigorous training. Most are successful, but this is not for everybody. So that's why we hire heavy. And both outdoor city pools in Knoxville open up this weekend. The costs are just between three and four dollars a person. Robin and John ready to hit the pools. All right, Brandon, thank you. Many people plan to head for the lake as well on Memorial Day weekend and authorities are urging you to be careful. The Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency says during the 2018 Memorial Day weekend, there were three boating accidents with injuries. Ten people boating under the influence. They were arrested and two suffered property damage in some cases as well. An assistant manager at Concord Marina says people also need to watch for debris this year. It's been a pretty bad season for big logs and trash and litter and all that stuff. And uh, we have had some accidents, I'm sure, out there, people busting their props apart, and those are pretty expensive, so I definitely watch out for those. It also reminds people you need to make sure you have life jackets for everyone who's on the boat. And turning to your forecast now, we hit 90 degrees today. Normally, we average one day each May with a high in the 90s, but we could see several 90 plus degree days just this week. Chief Meteorologist Todd Howe joining us from the Weather Center. And Todd, as we talked about earlier, this is just the start of the spring. Just the start may need two hands and fingers to count those number of 90 degree days coming up. Yeah, it could be lasting into next week. First of all, let's take a look at one of the beautiful viewer submitted photos. Patricia Laney posting this on Facebook this evening. Gorgeous sunset on Chilhowee Lake. That's kind of a summertime picture, right? A warm summer day and maybe thinking about spending some time out on the water, the lakes, the pool, maybe heading to the beach. Great way to cool off, but be safe out on the water. Certainly, as we just heard, here's your look. Here's a look at your Thursday morning forecast. Partly cloudy, a warm start 68 at 6 a.m. 71 at 8 a.m. Heating up pretty quickly. Some clouds, low clouds early, partly cloudy and warm 77. We should be right back up around 90 degrees tomorrow. It's 80 right now. Upper 60s in the morning, 90 degrees again tomorrow, similar to today. We'll take a look at that extended forecast, talking about how long we'll see those 90s coming right up. Right now, we're enjoying a mostly clear sky, a little bit of haze from Sharps Ridge. Again, current temperature 80 degrees, south winds at 7, and a dew point a little muggy at 63 degrees. We'll talk about that Memorial Day weekend forecast. When we return in just a few moments. That's a New Orleans night, Todd. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank it's you. always about the dew point. Yes, huh? it is. Well, those hot temperatures could also put a strain on your air conditioner. The Tennessee Valley Authority says people should keep their thermostat set at 75 to save money.
It expects to see a high demand and power over the next couple of days. Now you can keep up with the heat using the WBIR app. There you can find the hourly and the extended forecast along with the live radar. You can download it for free in the App Store. New tonight, authorities identified the two people killed in a North Knox County crash. The Knox County Sheriff's Office says 19 year old Bryce Collier and 20 year old Cameron Smith both died. The single car crash happened this morning near Bell Road and Maynardville Pike. The Sheriff's Office is investigating. Bryce Collier used to play football for Gibbs High School. The team posted on Facebook asking people to keep his family in mind during this time. And Cameron Smith played basketball for Pigeon Forge High School last year. His team tweeted asking for prayers for his family. U.S. Senator Lamar Alexander says a bill aimed at restoring national parks is a priority of the Trump administration. The senator says Interior Secretary David Burkhart confirmed the commitment today. Senator Alexander says the president's budget sets aside six and a half billion dollars for the Restore Our Parks Act. The measure focuses on the nearly 12 billion dollar maintenance backlog for parks, including work in the Great Smoky Mountains. Now his remains will be brought back and he'll have a tomb rock with his name on it. Isn't that wonderful? Almost 75 years after he was killed in World War II, a Roan County veteran is now home. The fi family of Army Private First Class William Delaney was finally able to accept his remains in a coffin covered with an American flag. 10 News reporter Shannon Smith was there for this emotional homecoming. Shannon. Private First Class Delaney was killed during World War II in Germany, November of 1944. Years ago, his family was told he stepped on a landmine and no remains were found. But now, a lifetime later, his remaining nieces and nephews have the truth and the closure their family always hoped for. Frankie Copeland never met her uncle. My parents and my grandmother didn't talk a lot about what had happened to him. William Delaney, who they called Frank, was killed in World War II, nine years before Copeland was born. I always kept his picture up because it meant a lot to me because I was named after him. She always felt close to him. Even though I haven't met him, he showed me the courage. Copeland's family was told her uncle's remains were never found. But a few months ago, that changed with a call from the military. They asked me would I be willing to do a DNA, and I told them, of course. All it took for Copeland's namesake to come back home to Kingston was a sample of her DNA. So when the military called me and told me that my DNA were the dots that connected him back to my uncle, it was just amazing. Copeland finally found out how her uncle died. The official record says an enemy artillery shell hit his foxhole in Germany in 1944, and that's where he died. He was 24. Away from home and in active battle, how scared uh, he must have been and the challenges he had to face. After sitting in an unmarked tomb for decades, the military finally identified Delaney's remains, and on Wednesday, he came home. I'm just really grateful that this day has happened for him. His niece was among the family members at the Knoxville airport who will escort his remains back to Kingston where he'll be buried in his family plot. Governor Lee has declared a day of mourning from sunrise to sunset this coming Sunday in honor of Delaney's service. He'll be buried on Monday in Kingston and that happens to be his sister's birthday. Robin, John. We are grateful he is home. Thank you, Shannon. East Tennessee Children's Hospital is preparing those with disabilities for the workplace. Project Search is an internship program the hospital has offered for six years now. It teaches young people living with disabilities the necessary skills needed for employment. The program begins in February. It ends in October. The internship has an 85.5% success rate. It helps me to, just to get a lot of skills, just you know, everyday skills that I need to know, learn in the workforce. So I actually can go to a job and actually get a lot accomplished. People interested in the internship can apply from now through mid-October. Parking prices at McGee Tyson Airport will go up this summer. The Metro Knoxville Airport Authority will raise the short-term lot from $18 to $20 a day. The long-term lot will increase to $12 a day from, to $14 a day. The economy parking lot will remain at just a few bucks. You can see 10 bucks there. The airport authority says the money will go to adding a new security lane checkpoint and 450 economy parking spaces will take effect July 1st along with the new pricing.
Well, the third and final round to determine whether Tennessee or New York has the best Long Island iced tea will take place in Maryland of all places. Last year, Visit Kingsport claimed the drink was created on Long Island in Kingsport back in the 1920s. But a bar owner in Long Island, New York, says a man invented that drink there in 1972. Kingsport and Long Island have both went around. This tiebreaker will be a blind contest coming up on June 13th. That'll be fun. Oh, yeah.